All right, so welcome back, everyone. This is session room number four, and we have Jakub here with us. Uh, Jakub Schultz is a principal software engineer in Red Hat, and the topic will be build your own social media analytics with Apache. Okay, Jakub, the floor is yours. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, and uh, yeah, welcome everyone to my talk about uh, building social media analytics with uh, Apache Kafka. Uh, you already heard most of the introduction. Uh, what I really do as uh, my main work is I work with Kafka and with the project called Streamzy, which is about running Apache Kafka on, uh, on Kubernetes and that's really how I came up with this uh, talk because these are the things uh, I spent uh, a lot of time with. Uh, what I would really uh, love you to take away from this talk is that, uh, yeah, you can do quite a lot of nice and cool stuff with Apache Kafka and uh, something like Twitter. But I also want you to take away that uh, Apache Kafka is more than just the messaging broker, which probably everyone uh, heard about and everyone knows, and that uh, it makes it really easy to build uh, fairly complex uh, applications without too much code and without too much effort. But don't worry, there will be some code as well. Uh, and what's, what's really important to understand is that uh, uh, Apache Kafka, it's fairly big ecosystem of different tools and, uh, and parts. And some of these are directly in the Apache Kafka project itself. Uh, that's, of course, the, the Kafka brokers, but it's also the Connect API for integration with other systems. Uh, there is a tool called Mirror Maker for mirroring data between the Kafka clusters. Uh, there's uh, also uh, the java clients for consuming and producing messages uh, uh, from java there's the streams api for streams processing and there are some other and smaller components as well but then uh, what really uh, then shines is that there's a huge amount of different tools and components which is outside the apache kafka project itself and that's for example all the different uh, connectors for uh, for the Kafka Connect uh, framework, but it's also things like uh, schema registries, uh, of course, clients for, for other programming languages. Uh, uh, there are operators for running it on, uh, on Kubernetes, such as the Streamzy project I work on. There are all kinds of tools for stream processing, uh, ETL processing for for artificial intelligence or machine learning, which integrate very well with Kafka. There are different UIs for monitoring or managing uh, the different Kafka components. So there's really a huge amount of things you can choose with. And just by kind of reusing them and building your applications together from them, you can do quite a lot. There's also this, uh, this idea that uh, Kafka isn't really messaging, but it is something called even streaming platform. And uh, yeah, to be honest, even streaming platform, that sounds like a bit uh, random buzzwords put together. Uh, and actually, if you would Google it, there will be probably many different definitions. But one of the definitions which I like quite a lot is that something would call itself even streaming platform should uh, handle several different capabilities. It should be able to import events from some other systems, from some other platforms. It should be able to store these events and then distribute them to the applications which are interested in them. It should be able to process these events. That can mean all kinds of different things from some transformations, enrichment, uh, and uh, doing some actions based on these events and so on. And then at the end, uh, quite often, you would want, again, to export the events or the results of these events uh, to some other systems. And uh, Kafka does this really well. The import and export part, that's what the Connect API handles. Uh, the Kafka brokers, they are what handles the storage and uh, the distribution of the events or of the messages. And then the streams API, that's what you can use for processing uh, the events together with all kinds of different uh, clients, of course. 
So uh, yeah, Kafka definitely matched this definition of event streaming platform. And uh, what we will really do in this talk and in the in the demos I will show later is uh, we will start with uh, with Twitter. And we will be basically reading the events from Twitter. And in this case, the events, they will be basically the tweets uh, published by different people. And we will use the Kafka Connect framework together with something called uh, Apache Camel connectors to get the tweets from, uh, from the Twitter itself and get them into our Kafka brokers as, a, as a messages into some topic. And then we will use the streams API to uh, do different kinds of analytics and processing on them. And uh, just for fun, but also because, uh, yeah, that's really what I spent uh, most of the time on. We will do all of this uh, on top of Kubernetes. So let's have a look in uh, a bit more detail into the, into the different uh, parts of this. So let's start with the Twitter. Twitter, of course, if you use Twitter, then in most cases, you probably use it from some browser application or on your smartphone or iPad. But of course, there is some API which is in the background, which allows you to uh, kind of talk with the Twitter servers and ask for the tweets on your timeline or the retweets and likes or the direct messages or search for some keywords. And uh, uh, there is a version of this API which is available for free. It has uh, all kind of uh, rate limits of how often you can use the different APIs and how often you can do something. But the free version is what I use in this uh, in this demo. And at the end, I will share with you also the link to the GitHub repository with all the source code. So if you wanna if you wanna try this, what I'm doing here you can really just use the free account, uh, free developer account for the Twitter APIs and repeat everything. You don't need any special kind of kind of access to, to Twitter to, uh, to re repeat these demos at home. And then the Kafka Connect, that's part of the Apache Kafka project, uh, but it's a standalone component. Uh, People sometimes think that the Kafka Connect and the connectors, they are running as part of the Kafka brokers, but it's not the case. It's really a separate process, uh, separate Java virtual machine, which runs the Kafka Connect application. Uh, and the Kafka Connect or the Connect API, that's what's really used to get data from other systems into Kafka or the other way around from Kafka into other systems. And uh, the Apache Kafka project itself really contains just uh, some very simple, more or less example connectors. And uh, really what it works with is uh, connector plugins basically developed by different third party developers and companies, which provide integrations uh, with the different systems, platforms and applications. So if you are, want to integrate with something what's fairly common and what others are using, it's really quite likely there is already a connector plugin which exists. And uh, you have, of course, also the option to write the custom connectors uh, either for your own systems or uh, for something what uh, nobody used yet. And the connectors, they are always distinguished into source and sync connectors. The source connectors, they are always used to get data from outside into Kafka. And the sync connectors, they get the data from Kafka to the, uh, to the outside, so to some other system. And then uh, in my particular example and demos, I will use the connectors, which are part of the Apache Camel project. Uh, I guess everyone probably heard about Apache Camel. It's one of the biggest Apache Software Foundation projects, which has several hundred of different integrations. So uh, kind of ways how to connect with some system or platform and exchange data with it. And you can use it in many different uh, ways. I think there were some uh, uh, other talks here at DEF CON about something called Camel K, for example, which is more about uh, serverless and using it directly. But I will here use it in the form of the connector for, uh, for Kafka Connect. And in particular, I will use three different connectors, which uh, then leverage the Twitter API, and it's a timeline search and direct messages uh, connectors. Uh, then uh, 
Kafka brokers, uh, they will be there in the demo as well. Uh, they are kind of the central part of every Kafka architecture, uh, and they are responsible for distributing the messages from producers to the consumers. But they basically decouple them, and the messages are also stored in the Kafka brokers. And if you want, then you can really store them there for a fairly long time. It's not like they are stored for a few seconds and then passed to the consumer. They can be stored for years if you want. Uh, and the brokers, it's also what uh, allows uh, architectures based on Apache Kafka to provide high availability and, uh, and scalability as well. What is, what is good to understand is that uh, uh, I talk here, or I already talked about the connect uh, part. I will talk a bit more about the streams API. While these seem like a separate component inside of them, there's always Kafka consumer and producer. So when they connect to the Kafka brokers, the broker doesn't really, they don't have some special connection, some special protocol. They are really just the same as, as any other clients and they, use the same same protocol and the same technology. And then once we have the, the tweets, the events in the Kafka brokers, we can do the processing. And what I will use for that will be the streams API, which uh, is really just a library which you can include into your own uh, Java applications. It's not some complicated framework with some workers and some jobs and some scheduling of the jobs to the workers through the processing. It's really just a jar which you add to your application uh, and you can just uh, use it from there. So it doesn't matter what kind of framework you are using or whether you just write your own main functions directly. Uh, you can always use the streams API. And despite it being this kind of simple, it has really quite a lot of functionality. It can do all kinds of stateless and stateful operations. It can do transformations. It can do aggregations. It can do joins. It can do uh, windowing where uh, you kind of process only some windows uh, of the data. And the whole thing is also scalable. Uh, in the, in the demos here, I will be mostly working with just my Twitter timeline, which isn't that big and it's not really a million messages per second, but everything I will be showing, it really is scalable. And if you would want, if you would have the, the use case for it, and of course the hardware, then uh, yeah, you can really scale it. You can run it in many instances in parallel, in many replicas, and you can get quite a big performance uh, out of it if you want. And then, so I said that the Streams API, you can basically use it with any kind of framework or however you want in Java. I, in particular, will use it with something called Quarkus, which is a framework or, or Java stack, if you want, uh, which uh, is designed for cloud native deployment. So during the design, there was uh, a lot of thought put on how to make it start up very quickly and to have small memory footprint. And uh, it supports things like native compilation so that you get just one native executable instead of kind of, of these uh, different lib directories with uh, tens or hundreds of different jars. So that's all super nice and it makes it quite easy to run these things on, on Kubernetes. So that's why I'm using it. And it also has a has great support for the Kafka consumers, producers, and for the streams API. So I, of course, leverage it as well. But everything what I will be showing later in the source code that can be really reproduced just with the streams API itself. You do not really need the Quarkus for that. So if you don't use that uh, and use something else, you can still do the same. And then uh, in one of the demos, I will also do a bit of a uh, machine learning. And for that, I will use this uh, deep Java library, which is a Java project which uh, builds on top of some other projects such as PyTorch, uh, Apache MXNet or TensorFlow. And it can be used for, for machine learning and, and deep learning. Uh, so you can really use it for things like image classification, object detection, sentiment analysis. And to be honest, I'm not the biggest expert on the things like machine learning and artificial intelligence and so on. But if you want to start with it, if you want to at least play with it a bit, this is a great project which has uh, nice examples and it has uh, 
kind of this library of uh, pre-trained models which you can easily use and uh, yeah that's why i'm using it uh, in this talk uh, as well and then of course to run the whole thing on on kubernetes i will use the strimzy project which provides the the operators for running apache kafka on kubernetes and uh, it tries to make it super easy to deploy kafka on on cube and it supports all kind of components including kafka connect and connectors uh, and uh, all the things which we will be doing today okay so uh, that's more or less the theoretical introduction uh, into the different things i will be doing and different projects i will be using now before we actually do something we will need to deploy kind of the backbone. We will need to deploy the Kafka cluster with the brokers and the, and the Kafka Connect. So let's have a quick look uh, at how you can do that. And uh, to be honest, uh, I have it already deployed here uh, and running. And that's not necessarily because uh, I would be afraid that it would not work in a live demo or it would take long time. It, uh, I'm quite confident <laughs> that it would work and that it would be fairly quick. But I have it already deployed for uh, around a month, I think since late Christmas or beginning of January, so that it can collect all the different tweets from my timeline during all this time. And we have a bit more data to analyze because if I would just deploy it right now, then we would need to rely on uh, my timeline actually getting some tweets uh, now in the few minutes during the demos so that's why it's already running and you can see that uh, i have here three different pods on my kubernetes cluster with the with the kafka brokers uh, i have a zookeeper here i have uh, the connect cluster deployed here as well and i have some other tools uh, to help me manage uh, and monitor the whole thing but also i have it already deployed i will just quickly show you how you can uh, deploy it if you already use some operators it's probably not completely new to you uh, but you use this uh, kind kafka custom resource which works kind of as the blueprint for your for the for your kafka deployment and you describe there exactly how the kafka cluster should look like so i can for example say here okay i want to have three replicas uh, of my kafka brokers you can specify the resources uh, which uh, you want to have in your cluster. As you can see, in my case, it's really running on my home cluster and it's not, not too big deployment, but uh, yeah, you can use the same, uh, same projects and tools to run something on dedicated hardware with uh, hundreds gigabytes of memory and so on if you want. I also configure some some JVM options. Uh, what's really great is that uh, I can also configure the listeners, uh, so the ports where the clients will connect, uh, including things such as authentication. And uh, I have your authorization as well. And what else do we have here? We have the storage configuration. We have the metrics configuration. There's built-in support for Prometheus metrics for monitoring. And then pretty much we do the same for Zookeeper as well. Uh, and basically we create a resource like this, and then you would just do kubectl apply on this, and the Streamzy operator will take care of the rest and uh, deploy all the clusters and configure everything. And very similarly, we also deploy the, the Kafka Connect cluster. Uh, as I said, inside the Kafka Connect cluster, it's really just a consumer and producer. So I create this, uh, this Kafka user, uh, which it will use to authenticate. And I give it some ACL, some access rights, which it needs to, to use the right topics for storing the configuration, but also to, uh, uh, publish the tweets to the, these topics and read from them and so on. And then this is a part which I have commented out, but uh, as I said, the Apache Kafka project itself, it doesn't have that many connectors. So you need to add the connectors which you want to use into the deployment. And for that, what will Streamzy do for me, it will build a brand new container image and it will add there the connectors which I tell it that I want to use. So that's why for the actual deployment, you would need to specify some Docker credentials to the repository where you want to have the Docker container or the, the container image deployed. Uh, 
And then, uh, so that's commented out so that I just don't share the real credentials. And similarly, we will also need to uh, have a secret with the credentials for the Twitter API because that requires some authentication. So the connectors will need to use this to talk with the Twitter API. And then uh, we have just the the Kafka Connect deployment, which again kind of follows the same principle. It uh, how many replicas it have, what are the resources, the configuration. Here we configure how to connect to the Kafka cluster and the authentication and so on. And again, you would do kubectl apply on this to deploy it. And then when it's running, you can also do something like kubectl get Kafka Connect or YAML. And you can see that it's already deployed and uh, that it has the, the connectors which I want to use uh, added there. So all these Twitter direct message connector, Twitter search connector, Twitter timeline. It's actually, I, I skipped that uh, in, uh, in the YAML, but in the Kafka Connect resource, there's this build part where I specify all the different uh, connectors which I want to have added into the deployment. So Twitter search, Twitter timeline, Twitter direct messages, and they will be all automatically added there. So that's the that's the Kafka cluster and the Connect cluster, and uh, we have it already up and running. So now we can move to the actual demos, uh, which will be a bit more about code, and uh, it will show. Uh, something a bit more interesting. And the first one will be what I call timeline word cloud demo. So what we will do is we will deploy connector into Kafka Connect, which will read the tweets from my, from my timeline. So these are the tweets or retweets from the accounts which I'm following if you don't use Twitter. And then we will use the Kafka Streams API to analyze the tweets and try to find out what are the topics I am most interested in, uh, what are the hashtags or the, the Twitter handles mentioned most commonly in my timeline. So let's uh, first check how would one deploy the, the connector. So uh, again, I have it already deployed and running, but this is kind of the YAML which would uh, configure the, the connector. First, we have to create a Kafka topic where the connector will send the messages. And uh, then we create the Kafka connector resource, which will actually configure the connector itself. And you can see we say, okay, the, the class which we use for this connector, it should be this common Twitter timeline source connector. If you remember, it's source connector, so it gets the data from Twitter into our Kafka broker. And then uh, we also have to specify where does it find the, the credentials for the Twitter API, uh, which will be in the environment variables mapped from the secret. And then we also tell it to send the messages in as uh, as JSON. And when I do kubectl get Kafka connector with the timeline, you can see that it's ready. It's already running. And when I quickly switch uh, into the browser and check my Grafana, and check the Kafka exporter and let's find the Twitter timeline topic. Then you can see that it has already almost 5,000, uh, or that's the offset here, that it has uh, around 4,843 messages right now. So that's the number of tweets which it basically collected since, uh, since I deployed it uh, for the first time. And then when I switch to my IntelliJ, we can have a look at the Streams API application, which we will use to process these. So let me zoom this up a bit into the presentation mode. Uh, so this is the POM file for my, uh, 
uh, for my application, which is uh, doing the data processing. As I said, it's using this, this Quarkus uh, framework. And uh, it also, when I scroll down, it also loads the, the streams API dependency. But as I said, if you would use some, some other framework or just pure Java without any framework, then uh, yeah, the code will look pretty much, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, it's really just Kafka streams what I'm using here. And the most of the code is actually in this, uh, in this build topology method. This is the method where I create the Kafka streams topology, where I basically take the Kafka, tell the Kafka streams API how it should read and process the data. And uh, first, I need to define something what's called SERDE. So SERDE stands for serialization, deserialization. And that's kind of a class or, or object uh, which uh, the Kafka streams API is using when it's reading the messages from Kafka. It's using it to deserialize them. Uh, and when it's sending them back to Kafka, it's using to serialize uh, the messages. So with this, uh, this tweet survey, which I have prepared here, uh, that's basically what uh, helps Kafka streams API to take the JSONs which it's receiving and decode it directly into some Java objects so that I can easily use it uh, in the application. And then in this case, what I will be doing is I will be counting some data and I want to store this data and want to query this data later. So I also prepare these store suppliers, which kind of create uh, a Kafka stream stores. They will have some local caching done locally on the, in the pod where I will be running this application. But like all the data which I will use there and the aggregation results, they will be also stored inside Kafka. So when the application restart, restarts uh, because, I don't know, some upgrades or for whatever reason, it is basically able to reload the previous state from the, from the Kafka cluster from this special topic and then continue in the processing. And then I used the actual stream builder to build the, the stream processing pipeline. So I always start with a stream, which basically says, okay, now start reading this, uh, this, the data from this topic and use these servers uh, to uh, encode or decode them. So this, the first one that's kind of for the, for the message key, which we don't really care about. This is for the message payload. That's where the actual tweet will be. And then we will get basically a stream of the tweets coming from the topics and we can do the processing using this streams api uh, dsl language so what we will for example do here is in this flat map values we will take the the tweets we receive and we will extract the the text from them because it's really the text we are interested in here it's not about all the all the metadata about what application was used to send it what was the place where it was sent from and so on. So we extract the text here. And then what I do to find out what the tweets are really about is uh, I will basically split it into words. So I use regular expression to, to split it into the individual words. And then I do some filtering. So uh, I'm not interested in words which are too short. I'm not interested in any URLs. And I have a kind of I don't know, 20, 30 list, which I have on the ignored list, which are kind of these common words in English, like this, that, then, and so on, which are in many tweets, but which actually don't mean anything on their own. So I'm ignoring these. And then uh, I basically go through this and group uh, all the words which uh, are in the tweets, and then I'm going to count them. So. As a result, this will basically tell me that uh, in the tweets in my timeline, the word Kubernetes has been out of the almost 5,000 tweets has been, I don't know, 200 times, for example. And I do this counting twice. I Once I'm interested for the whole time it's running, how many times the words were there and, uh, and what were really the topics there. But I'm also using this windowing I mentioned before. Uh, to basically tell me, okay, let's not care about what was month ago. Let's look at what was happening in the last one hour. 
So this will look into one hour windows and it will always move the window every minute, basically. So this will basically do the counting, not since I started this application, but only for the last hour. And it will kind of tell me what were the main events happening during the last uh, hour. And then uh, I really just build the topology and it will start reading the messages and it will start doing all the, all the processing for me. And what I have here so that I can actually see this data and uh, look into what are the results. I have here this simple REST endpoint, which can give me two basic things. So I, I can ask it for the all time top 20, 30, 50 words, and it will basically give me the, the number of words from the top of the table, which are most common in, in my timeline. And similarly, I have another one for the latest words. So that's for the window counting. So that's for the most common words in my Twitter timeline in the last hour. And if you check what this interactive queries is doing, then uh, that's actually the store. If you remember the store suppliers we created on the beginning, it's using these stores and it's basically querying the calculation results, the counts results. And it tells me what the current results are and what are the most common uh, common results. And when I get out of the IntelliJ and switch to my uh, to my browser, then this is actually the result. And uh, if you know me a bit, you know that I'm a football fan. So this AVFC and Villa, that's the Aston Villa football team, which I support. So there's a lot of tweet about that, obviously, in my timeline. But you can see here also Kubernetes, for example. There's uh, There's cloud. Uh, well, the new year 2022, that was probably quite big on the beginning of January. So that's there as well. And I can also check just the just the latest tweets, uh, which kind of show what was in, in the last uh, hour. So that you can see gives us different results. And what I then have here as well is this, uh, is this tech cloud. So the, the words, maybe they show quite a lot of about what I'm interested in, but maybe the things like the hashtags or the mentions, maybe they will show a bit more. So you can see again, the, the Aston Villa Football Club is the top place here, but there's Kubernetes. I guess somewhere there might be DevConf uh, as well. I don't see it right now, uh, but it was there yesterday when i was doing the rehearsal so yeah you can see that this way you can easily take and visualize uh, your twitter timeline and you can easily see on uh, what's going on in the timeline and uh, yeah i kind of know what i'm following of course but i i can really say that uh, yeah the, the cloud with the words does really well job to represent uh, what are the tweets I'm following uh, and what I'm interested in. So let's uh, move to the next demo and let's uh, bring it to another level. Uh, so now we were just kind of uh, getting the tweets and, uh, uh, and analyzing it. And yeah, it might be interesting to see that, but at the end, I'm probably the only one interested in what's in my timeline, and I already know that. So let's see if we can do something a bit more practical. And uh, uh, so imagine the situation that you have some open source project or maybe a company or your personal account, and yeah, people might be tweeting about you, and you might be interested. Maybe if someone tweets something nice about your project, then you can maybe come back and retweet it or say thanks for the kind words. And maybe if someone tweets something bad about your project that they were unhappy or about your company, maybe you can get back to them and try to find out what they didn't like, what should be improved, and so on. And that's what we will do here in this second demo. So what we will do is uh, we will use a a connector which will search for some keywords on the on the whole Twitter and we will use again the Kafka streams API to analyze these tweets but we will now employ the machine learning uh, uh, technology with this deep Java learning library and we will use the sentiment analysis which will tell us whether these tweets are positive or negative and kind of how much positive or how much negative they are.
And when it identifies some tweets which are really strongly positive or strongly negative, it will uh, send us a direct message on my Twitter and tell me, oh, hey, look, there is this tweet. Uh, you know, that's quite negative about your project. Maybe you want to have a look into it. And uh, if you want to take part in this, then you can send some tweets uh, with this hashtag uh, uh, BYOSMA, as in build your own social media analytics. And if you use this hashtag, then it should reach, uh, read, uh, it should match the, the search and reach into my application running here. And we might see it in the in the demo pop up if it's uh, sufficiently positive or negative. So if you wanna if you wanna try this, then uh, you can give it a try. And uh, I'm going to switch again to the command line. And again, I have it all deployed but just to quickly show it so i have this this search connector which is searching for this uh, uh, for this hashtag which i mentioned but i have also the sync connector this time and the sync connector is uh, the twitter direct messages sync connector so that's what will be reading the data from a kafka topic and it will be sending them as a Twitter direct messages to my account. So don't get confused. This weird number is actually the user handle for my for the Twitter account I'm using for development and for, for demos. So that's the actual Twitter account. And then we have, again, the credentials. And we have the topic which it is consuming. And it will read from this topic and, uh, and send me the direct messages as alerts. And uh, we can also have a look. Uh, this is the actual deployment. I didn't show that for the previous demo, but the actual application is always running as a, as a pod inside the Kubernetes cluster as well. So I again create the Kafka user and then uh, a regular deployment where I just point it to the container image uh, with the Quarkus application and I configure it where it should connect. I again configure the users, authentication, encryption, and so on. And that's really just running as a, as a deployment. Uh, in my uh, in my Kubernetes cluster. So this is the sentiment analysis one. These were the TAC and word clouds. And we can also check the source codes of this uh, of the sentiment analysis application. So if I go to the POM file, what you can see here, it's uh, it's again I have all the Quarkus libraries, but I also include these. Uh, this AI.djl, uh, so that's the deep Java learning library. Uh, and I include the model zoo, which contains the pre-trained model. So I didn't really train the sentiment analysis on my own. I'm just using one of the examples. And then uh, when I go to the, to the topology, it should be really familiar to you. I again create the tweets are there for the decoding. And then what's new here is uh, this is the part where I load the, the deep learning uh, model, which does the sentiment analysis, which does the prediction. And then I really build the stream application. So I again read from the Kafka topic. And then I filter out uh, the tweets which I'm interested in. I take the text of the tweet. And then I run this uh, predict method of the predictor. And that's what does the sentiment analysis. And it returns me this classification object, which basically says uh, how it was classified, whether it was positive or whether it was negative. And it tells me the probability, so kind of how much positive or how much negative it is. And what I'm really doing here, if the probability is more than 90%, then uh, I will basically take the URL of the, of the tweet, which was analyzed, and I will prepare some additional message which says the following tweet was classified as, uh, so this will be replaced with positive or negative. And I give it the percentage as well. And I will send it to another Kafka topic. And this is the alerts topic, which the, the sync connector is reading and which will be sent to the to direct messages. So then I would again just need to compile this, build a container image and deploy it. And uh, 
here is my Twitter account and we can try if it works. So normally I would not now type some message how the weather was nice and sunny and so on. But to be honest, today here in Prague outside my window, it's really cold and raining. So it's not that great. So let's try some negative message today. So uh, the weather is terrible today. It is freezing cold and raining. And I have to add the hashtag. So build your own social media analytics. And now I can just uh, tweet it. And now the, the search connector should find this from the Twitter API. The streams application should analyze it. And if everything works well, I should see here in my uh, in my messages uh, the the information, and you can see this is uh, 13 seconds old, and it tells me okay the following tweet was classified as negative, with 97.60% probability, and it gives me a link to the to the tweet, which is the tweet I just sent. The weather is terrible today. It's freezing cold. Uh, blah blah blah. So we can see that it uh, that it worked. Uh, hopefully, if you use this for your project or for your company, you will be getting only the positive notifications and not the negative ones. But uh, yeah, we can see that the, the sentiment analysis works quite nicely and it identified the tweet and it sent me the notification and I can now uh, yeah talk to this guy to stop complaining about uh, bad weather. So now uh, the last demo I have, is a little bit different. So now we were for, for in all these previous demos, we have something what we deployed and what is running and running and running. And uh, now I will try to do something different. I will more try to do some ad hoc analysis and just play with the stream of the tweets. And uh, what I will do is I will try to confirm some idea or some some uh, hypothesis, whether it's true or false. Now, uh, Gunnar Morling, who is one of the authors of the Debezium Kafka connector for change data capture, which you should check out if you are interested in databases and Kafka. He always says that when you tweet something, you should always attach some image or a video because such tweets, they kind of get more attention, more retweets and so on. So let's see if we can, uh, if we can confirm this, if this is true. And uh, so I have here this uh, this uh, ad hoc application, which what it really does is uh, it's reading the tweets from my from my timeline, and it's doing this aggregation. So in the previous in the first demo we used this counting, which is aggregation as well, but it just really does the counting. This is a custom aggregation where we basically. Uh, get the tweet, we check whether it has some image attached or not, and we count how many retweets they have, if they have some image attached and how many retweets they have without it. And then we count the, the average. And uh, in this case, I'm not going to send it to Twitter as direct message. I'm not going to send it to another Kafka topic. I'm just using this peak method to really log it into the command line and see what the result is. So let's uh, switch to the command line. And so because I'm still using Quarkus, it has this nice command Quarkus dev, which you can just use to kind of run the application in this dev mode where it's automatically recompiled and uh, you can easily kind of run it and debug it. So I'm using this to run it. Now it will take a while to start. It will connect to the Kafka broker. It will create some helper topics for the aggregations. And you can see it's now running and it's doing the calculations. And I guess now it's probably finished. So what we can see as the last, last result is that out of the almost 5,000 tweets in my timeline, it found 817 uh, tweets which had some retweets, which had some media. And the average number of retweets was 9.9. .9, so almost 10 retweets if you had some picture or video attached. And then it found almost 1,500 tweets without any media. And the average retweets there were only two retweets. So 
yeah, it looks like when Gunnar says you should attach picture or something to your tweet to get more attention, it's definitely true. It the example here, 5,000 tweets, it might be too small, but yeah, it kind of suggests that he's right and you should uh, always, always do it. So yeah, that's kind of uh, one of the experiments you can do. And you can, of course, if you want, you can play with these ideas uh, a bit more. You can uh, try to find out what's the right time to publish a tweet, where the people tweeting about you are living or what apps they are using uh, and so on. And you can, of course, also use the other social media networks uh, as well. And that's really the end of the talk. Here are the links of the different projects uh, which I used uh, during the demos. And more importantly, here's the link for the GitHub repository, uh, which has all the source codes and the YAML files and so on. So if you are interested in this to uh, try it out and see how it works, uh, that's where you can find it. And I hope... Uh, you learned how to do some some cool things with uh, with Twitter, but you also learned that uh, Kafka makes it really easy to just take the different parts of the ecosystem and build them together into fairly powerful applications. So uh, that's it, and thanks for watching and listening. Thank you, Jakub. That was a great presentation. Um, we still have some time, but I don't see any questions. So I think maybe if someone is interested to connect with Jakub, you can try in the work adventure. And yeah, otherwise, definitely. thank you. And that's it.